Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Golden Kamui season 4 episode number 3 reaction. Alright, the previous episode. Oh boy, we saw Kadokura's luck in action. And he calls himself unlucky but at that moment that was the thing that made him unlucky obviously because he fell for like you know he, he, he was he chose the wrong one but at the same time you know his luck kind of uh, you know like helped him out by the end where he was saved you know by consuming another poison and both of them actually neutralizing each other that was really cool i was not expecting that so basically he thought that you know during that session where he got captured not captured but when he was like you know like used was he, when he when that guy he told him that oh we'll play a game and if you're able to defeat me then you can go and get hijikata back uh, and if you lose I'll, I'll still free him that whole section uh, we see his loyalty towards Hijikata. Not only that, we also see how his luck is the thing that is like you know that that made him a winner by the end of it. And I love the fact that he consumed the other poison, thinking that it's going to <laughs> it's going to quicken his death. But it actually worked completely opposite because he took I think he took Wolf's Pain and then he took Fugu poison. While we later get to know that Hijikata did the completely opposite, he took the Fugu poison and take, took Wolf's Paint to neutralize it. So that was crazy, you know, that was like a crazy section. But, and you know, this happened over here, obviously on the other side, like, you know, like the whole Ushiyama situation, Ushiyama and that kid, you know, they, they had a lot of fun, you know. <laughs> so he, 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 he was like, yeah, like Ushiyama is my, like, you know, it's under my subordinate and then he was like oh shame is too strong i need to i need to i need to de defeat him and like you know completely uh like you know erase him from this like you know world or something like that he said <laughs> and yeah that, that was funny little section and ushiyama had his adventures you know mm, but yeah that's where it ended uh, hijikata ended up getting out and uh, yeah he killed that guy mm. So yeah, let us begin. Let's get started with this one. This is episode number three. Yeah, I'll be putting the subtitles and the time right here. Link it to whichever is a preference and let's get started. All right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Okay. <clears throat> mm. Burning waterfall, no good of it is. Wait, what? Okay. Wait, who's this? Is this is a new character, Kikuta. He seems nice. Hmm. Stronger his armor will. Oh. All right. <laughs> Strange man. Oh, strange man. Oh. Yeah, right. Okay. He, he has more priorities <laughs> than listening to his story. <laughs> uh.
Oh yeah, that's him, isn't it? That that guy. All right. Smell of sulfur. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's an understandable reasoning. <laughs> oh, that's him. Oh, wait, what? Troubles. What? Oh, wait, is it? <laughs> okay. Hmm. Oh, okay. No, I think that was the tattoo, wasn't it? What was that? Wait. <laughs> I don't know why, but that guy seems a little bit suspicious. Wait! <laughs> um, that's a magic trick. Oh, he is also being suspicious. He thinks that, okay. Okay. Ah, uh, they're they're trying to do stuff from their direction. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Wait a minute, what in the, these, what? Are these prisoners? What is that? Tony. Oh, that was him. Okay, there you go. So I'm guessing these are also, I'm pretty sure he, she, he probably has like tattoos on his back. That was what they saw. It's spoke of her. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Is this like a... Ah, there you go. Ah, there you go. Yep. 
Wait, so was he like running around naked or something? What the hell? In the middle of the snow? Oh, he was in the hot springs. That's why he was naked, I'm guessing. Oh. Whoa. Wait, what's up with his eye? Why did he? Oh, he, that's why, oh my God, this guy is intelligent. That's why he covered one of his eyes so that it's already like, you know, used to the darkness. Oh, they're ready with the eye covered. Ah, is that so? Wow, that's interesting. Wow. Yeah, and he has a gun. Damn, it's foggy. Oh, it's because of the hot springs. Oh, you're 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 out of bullets. Oh no. Yeah. Damn. Wait. How? <laughs> wow. Obsessed with stealing handguns. Ah. Wow. So he can like, you know, he, he, he doesn't have any worry of running out of bullets. Oh, okay. Yep. One thing, it, it took me a while to realize that guy's with Hijikata, isn't he? It took me a while to realize that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, yo, that was That's a trap. That smells like a trap. Oh boy. Yeah. No, he I, he cannot see, can't he? Because that's why he's doing the... Yeah, I remember. He's with, he, with Hidikata, wasn't he? As far as I can remember, it was in season... I think it was in season 2.
Oh, yep. Using the vibrations and the echoes and whatnot. Those icicles. Ice taglamites. Yeah, okay. Virgin. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter for him though. Because oh no. Yeah, this is a problem, you know, they cannot see it properly, so yo oh no it's digging themselves a hole hmm yeah hearing Okay, what's he doing? Oh! Yeah, he realized. He realized. He realized that actually. Yeah, he realized that using light is actually advantageous to them. Yep. Hmm. Oh, they're out. Really? Oh, okay, yeah, he is. Oh my god. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, he's bleeding and everything. Oh. Yeah, I was thinking, like... Ah. Lost March of Mount Hakoda. Oh. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're perfect for, you know, yeah. Backyard. Okay. Footsteps. Oh, yeah, he's baiting him like that. Is he like randomly shooting or something? Wait, what the? Oh, it's an avalanche! No! Is it an avalanche? Is 
Is it an avalanche? Yep, it's an avalanche. Oh my god. Whoa. He knew it, like he said. He knew, knows this place as like the back of his backyard. I'm guessing the, the loud noise is the one. Okay, yeah. That made the, like, you know, avalanche happen. But they need his, like, you know, tattoos, so. Yeah. It's <laughs> called me again. Wow. Yeah, you're quite excited. I can see that. It was like waiting here. Okay. Wait, he got it. Oh no, are they? Oh my god. Media line. Okay, so they're like hiding here so that they could go to Nikaido and uh, not Nikaido, sorry, Surumi and. Uh, Okay. Yeah, like they're going to give it to Surumi and they don't want them to. Okay, these. Hmm. Whoa, wait, what? <laughs> They're like... Oh no. I, I know this is a tradition, I can understand, but... He, he put that whole thing in his mouth? What the hell, Sugiwata? Pidika. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, Sugimoto, stop. <laughs> yeah. What? What? Oh. Wild oh, rich kid. Ah. Yeah. Um Ogata I, I think it was Ogata, wasn't it? Damn, Ogata has like so many people are pissed off at him. God. Okay, now I can understand who these two guys are. Uh, that's that guy, I forgot his name, and that's the Ainu guy, okay. Yep, they're from the, he's got the, I, I was, I was wondering, I was like, where have I seen him? If, if he's, 
Like when I saw when I saw him when it, I saw him in this episode, I was like, wait a minute, I feel like I've seen this guy before. And then later on, I realized, yeah, it's the same guy from Hijikata's. Wait, so why? What was he doing here? Like, I think he was shown in season two, wasn't it? Because I recently rewatched season three. Like, I rewatched it again, you know, I forgot most of the things in season three. So I don't remember seeing him there. So he was from season two, I'm guessing. And it's been so long I watched season two that I've, I've probably forgotten. Okay, that's it. All right, this episode. Okay, we begin this episode with uh, Surumi's, uh, you know, like uh, the uh, like you know, his team, um, Nikaido, Usami, you know, all of them in the hot springs. As always, these guys are just, just like what can I say? <laughs> Okay, so two people come, like first one person comes in. Okay, his name is, let me check it. Kikuta, okay. Kikuta, Kikuta, okay. I need to remember it. Warrant Officer Kikuta. And, uh, okay, so he was like kind of like, you know, getting uh, better. Like, you know, he's talking about how, how is your, you know, how is your, like, you know, uh, condition now? Are you okay? And he was like, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> So he's also obviously part of uh, Surumi's group and uh, just like um, everyone else he he's also like you know like very loyal to Surumi and uh, wants to I'm pretty sure he's loyal otherwise why he would he like you know think like you know like oh like and I want like to give some gift to Surumi that's why like you know he even like decided to like, kind of hide the whole thing from the other two uh, so that uh, you know he can actually give it to Surumi later on. So I'm pre yeah I'm pretty sure he's quite loyal to him. And <clears throat> okay, Ariko. Ariko is the name of the um uh, what's his name the the Ainu guy. Okay, so he talks about how uh, you know when they were went further up in the hot springs. Uh, he saw someone wearing like a patterned, uh, like you know, like a patterned dress, and running, uh, like you know, wearing geta in the middle of the night, and uh, you know that's like a thing that he saw, and he was like, oh, like you know, do you guys know anything about it? Now, <clears throat> obviously they're like, oh, you're probably mistaken, you know, like he he he's probably mistaken. And something's just. <laughs> I love the way <laughs> he looks at him like no Sami and Ariko comes in after that and uh, all right so all right so he says that wait so I'm I'm still so curious why was he in the, why was he shirtless in the middle of the night is it because he was in the hot springs I'm guessing I'm guessing it was probably because he was like you know like in the hot springs just chilling or something I'm not sure and uh, uh, you know Ariko uh, he he probably like you know came, went there and he realized that oh someone's here so he quickly probably like you know just uh, turned off the light light and like you know without any shirt just started running away or something and that's probably what happened otherwise it, it, it doesn't explain why was he shirtless in the middle of the night over there so it, it's probably because of that he was in the hot springs I'm guessing so, you know, like, and Ariko and, uh, oh my god, I can't forgot his name. Kikta? What, was that his name? Oh, this is the problem with me, you know? <laughs> I just forget. Uh, just a sec, let me check. Kikta, yes, correct, it was Kikta. Okay, Kikta and Ariko. Alright, so, <clears throat> they're like, you know, talking about that and they're like, yeah, do you know anything about it? And obviously, Surumi, uh, not Surumi, sorry. Usami and uh, Nikaido are like, yeah, they're like, nah, it's, 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 it's probably not something like that. You know, you guys are probably just tired, just, you know. <laughs> okay, so after that, uh, they talk about the secret hot springs, you know, only the Ainu's know about, and then they get to know, like, you know, later on in, in, their, in their room, 
and then they get to realize that um they like they are told that uh, Ariko is like a nine and uh, it's crazy how you know that guy was here he was massaging him he's already here he was like kind of listening to them this is where i was like wait a minute this guy looks familiar you know i looked at him and i'm like this guy looks familiar i don't know why but then i probably i just dismissed it i was like oh maybe maybe i'm just like you know like maybe i'm just i'm making a mistake or something but uh, no it, it turns out i i think like correct me if i'm wrong so he was he was with hijikata's team wasn't he and um, okay so that's like you no know, he, he was introduced in season two as far as i can remember so all right anyways um okay after that uh next day again they're in the hot springs <laughs> and here kikita is asking like you know nikaido that oh like you know tell me like, do you know anything about the tattoos and everything and he's like asking him how does it look like nikaido says i've never seen one and uh, wait a minute just a sec what the tattoos on the prisoners who ask you he's lying isn't he he, he saw or did he not? Like, in season one, like, you know, wasn't Shiraishi with... Uh, did he see Shiraishi's tattoos? I don't remember. I don't remember. This is the smaller details that I probably don't remember. Like, did he, in season one, obviously he was, like, you know, that whole thing that happened with Sugimoto. And the reason why he's just so pissed off at Sugimoto, you know, because of his, his whole brother, you know, like, and the, you know, you know all that stuff that happened there yeah i i don't think no no he never i don't think he met yeah i don't think he met shiraishi or or look, took got a look at shiraishi's tattoos either but he must have seen the tattoos haven't he? I'm, I'm pretty sure he's lying here obviously because you know like he he, he probably realized that what he's trying to do correct me if i'm wrong i i think he's lying because how is that possible like I mean, he's been with surumi for so long He's not seen the tattoos at least even once. I don't believe that. And I'm guessing that's also the reason why, like, you know, like, um, Kikuta looked at him like, hmm, like this. Do not believe him. Okay, so <clears throat> Kikuta tells, uh, I forgot his name. Ari, Arisu? No, what was his name? Ariko, something like that. Anyways, uh, the Ainu guy that uh, go go to your like you know village and uh, ask uh, you know like ask about this and uh, uh, like you know hold this whole if they have seen anyone or heard anyone like this and <coughs> okay so later on we see um... okay so. Here, Nikaido asks Usami that, what's Surumi going to do? You know, is he going to, uh, like, you know, like, go back to Abashi? And he's saying, like, no, Lieutenant Surumi is leaving uh, Abashi soon. Um, we'll meet up with him somewhere. And he's talk about the fortune teller and the, uh, like, you know, the old cannibal and all that. And he's like, I don't care. And uh, all this conversation, that guy was hearing. And later on, we see him and the other two having this conversation now okay let me read this uh section because all right those two that just arrived were with lieutenant surumi mm. <clears throat> okay they're a valuable source of information we should get rid of the soldiers named ariko and kikta before they realize who we are we should wait for the next new moon the moonlight of the snow makes the winter nights bright we need to hurry we, if we have to leave, we'll cease to be able to give information about the seventh division to Hijikata Toshiro. There you go. Yep, I knew it. Yeah, they were, they, obviously they're with, they are with Hijikata. So I probably missed this section while reacting. So, and I, I wasn't even sure about him at this section, you know. Like, I was, I was kind of thinking, I was like, I, I feel like I've seen this guy before. Where have I seen him? But I wasn't able to pinpoint it. So there you go. Yeah, it, it, it all makes sense. All right. Um... 
Tony San, you are the only one who let that soldier see. Okay, his name is Tony. Okay. All right. Now, next we see um, they are like, you know, Kikuta is like, he's like, it's kind of waiting for the night to fall so that, you know, like they can find out the whole thing about the Ketam person. And uh, here, um, Ari. Uh, the Ainu guy, Arisu, or Ari, Ari, again, I forgot his name. Uh, he asks, like, you know, the the person, like, you know, the old old grandma from the, like, you know, in the Ainu settlement, that who do you think it is? You know, like, do you know someone with like patterned stuff? And the grandma here answers the question. You know, like he, this whole thing that was kind of like, you know, he was being suspicious about. And I also kind of realized, like, when when they showed us that little flashback, not flashback, but that scene uh, of Tony running. I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't look like a patterned dress. That's the tattoos. And I'm I'm pretty sure, I'm like 90% sure that um, Usami and uh, I'm not sure about Nikai though, but I'm pretty sure Usami realized that was the tattoos. Like that was a tattooed prisoner. And he like, you know, he was just acting as if he didn't know what the hell is going on in that moment. I'm pretty sure he realized what's going on. And uh, yeah, now after that, uh, like, you know, the grandma tells him that, oh, it's, it's a tattoo. And he realized, and that's when it strikes him. He's like, all right, so yeah, this is what's, it's, what's going on. And uh, so after that, here, this part was really cool, you know, because uh, first of all, we see uh, Kikuta coming from behind. And, uh, you know, like uh, the Tony was over there with the lantern. I'm pretty sure this was a full on bait that he did you know he had his lights on because he wanted you know like like he probably had yeah you know like he he's not troubled by the lights because as far as i can remember he cannot see so that is why he kept the light on so that i'm guessing the other person obviously there's a light so when he's going to turn off the light you know he can probably just just hide in the darkness quickly and it'll take a while for them for their eyesight to get used to the darkness so using that momentary amount of time and taking advantage of the other character's blindness momentary blindness he's going to shoot him or something kill him something like that because we saw them like you know like you know, kind of uh, discussing about how they would kill them or something like that they were talking about so you know i'm pretty sure tony did this as a bait he was that's why he had the lights on and as soon as that happened he turned the lights off like i said you know like it's completely dark and uh, it will take a little while for their eyesight to get used to but he did not realize that kikuta was ready as well he kept one eye for light one eye for darkness which is an ext which was an extremely good uh, plan you know he was going to use the one eye that's open for you know like stuff to see in the light you know while he was going to use the one uh, eye that is closed take off the eye patch so that he could that that eye is easy used to the darkness so that he could see with it you know and uh, you know that that was that was extremely uh, what can i say witty of him and he did not realize that you know tony did not realize that tony was tony thought we got him but you know as soon as he did that he was like oh my god he can see me so obviously he was like yeah like my my plan is it's not going to be possible for it to go as flawlessly i thought as, as it would and here they give us a little nice little trivia is that pirates use the ipads for that reason is that true if that i feel like that is actually true you know because it makes so much sense why, why otherwise why would they why would they wear like an eye patch as a fashion statement i doubt that you know these guys like you know in the uh, like you know in the middle of the oceans they attack other ships plunder you know like get like you know robs other ships and does all that stuff why would they why would they like think about like fashion <laughs> i don't <laughs> i have done. or maybe not who knows why i, I guess pirates can have like their own fashion uh, you know like you know like prior prefer preferences so yeah but i'm not sure but anyways it would make so much sense that if that's is that if that's the reason why they kept an ipad and that's so cool that's like that this was like a mind-blown moment for me i'm like wow like all this time i was i watched like and i see i've seen so many pirates 
but I never knew that. Like that is the reason why they did it. So that you know, obviously, it makes sense. They need to go in the, in the, underneath the decks and everything. It's dark over there. Imagine it's like in the middle of the like you know hot sweltering sun. You know, you are attacking like you know another boat, uh, not boat or a ship, and the captain goes in like you know takes care of the people in the upper side of the like you know then the on the surface of the boat and then he has to go down like bam he'll be blind completely so that's why the ipads wow that's that's a that's a very good like you know like good like you know knowledge trivia information that i got to know here <laughs> okay and uh, so Tony realizes that oh boy, plan is my plan is not going to go as flawless as I thought it would. But you know, like the other two comes in, and he Tony was like, oh you guys, like you know, like you know, he can see us, you know, and uh, <clears throat> and Tony's like quickly like you know, run away, like you, know, you, you won't stand any chance against him because he has a gun, obviously. So they start like you know running and go on top of the mountains and they knew they're going on top of the mountains they knew there would be like you no know, fog and they come because of the sulfur of the hot spring and another good plan in tony's part because as soon as he realized that darkness won't affect him he started using fog like you know fog and the smoke he realized he can use that and that's the thing you know tony doesn't need any like you know any visual like you know, he even if he doesn't have any visuals he can do pretty well because of his whole thing that he does with the tongue you know and feeding it so he won't have any problems he can easily go through that fog but him you know he's going to have trouble with it because even if his eyes are accustomed to the darkness you know he, it's, it's foggy he cannot see anything even if it's accustomed so this was another good plan obviously he was getting like you know kind of like you know troublesome in this situation he was kind of troubled he was like cannot see anything and using this opportunity um in comes those two guys and they kind of use the thing you know like that that maze kind of thing to stab him now i was like oh my god is this it but he suddenly reveals that this guy has a goddamn like you know <laughs> like a collection of guns underneath his like you know coat and from moment when you know, when his bullets ran out ran out i was like oh my god he doesn't have any bullets what's he going to do but then we see he's like, like multiple guns and I'm like, oh God, so there you go. Like, you know, bullets are not a problem for him. And uh, he, like, they talk about how he has this kind of like a, like a, like a hobby or whatever of actually collecting the guns who, for the, for the people who he kills and all that. And that's why he has so many guns. And this is the one gun that he likes very much. And, uh, you know, and the, the thing that he stabbed him with that actually hit the gun. So he's fine, and uh, yeah, he brings out the guns and starts just shooting them. And uh, one of the guys, like you know, was still behind him. And before he could do anything, in comes Usami. And uh, Yukita is like, you, like you know, you you little, you know, you you already knew this was happening, and you kept quiet about it. <laughs> and Usami's like, ah, I'm sorry, you know, like. Nothing, I, like, you know, like that's, yeah, I, I, tr I, I, I did not say anything to you. Now, um, okay, uh, Nikaido realizes that it's actually the guy who was massaging them. <laughs> and uh, while all of this was happening, they went to like a cave, in the entrance of a cave. And oh boy, the cave is like the perfect place for Tony. Because, you know, um, here it's too dark, you know, like it's actually very dark to see anything. So Tony won't have any problem with it. So they're like, all right, let's go inside. All the three of them, little by little, girls inside, and they realize that there's something on the ground. Um, ice taglamites, I think that's what they call them. And uh, these are the ice, like a you know, drop of waters, which fell down and it was, you know, got, got frozen. So it's like filled with it. And uh, <clears throat> okay, there's something on the ground. Uh, Obviously, this is such a situation where if these break, Tony will realize where they are. Un unlike them, you know, who, who won't be able to do anything. Like they, what, what's going to be happening here is that they'll be only giving away their, their location. That's all that's going to happen in this situation. 
and Tony can probably shoot them from the darkness. Um, all right, so here they realize that Tony is can actually hear pretty well, you know, and uh, they're going to he's going to use the sound of the things breaking to target them. And uh, now here's one thing that uh, the Ainu guy says that I never even noticed the eyes when I came here before. Uh, if I had a chino yet, I can avoid them. So before he just probably came here and saw those and he was like, ah, it's okay. And because he had the light with him, you know, he can easily go past them. So he never really thought about it that much. Now he realizes that in the darkness, this is like a full on trap, you know, for them to fall into. And especially for, like, you know, if the opponent is a person who can hear so well. So he's like, yeah, this is like, you know, bad situation. And it's crazy, you know, how their gun is so big. And one of them was like, you know, moving the gun and it actually hits the eyes and falls down. Bam, that's only on all the thing that they need, like, you know, Tony needed. He's like shooting from the other side. And they're also like, you know, returning the gunshots and uh... Okay, so He realizes that he's not actually shattering the eyes. He's moving, but he's not shattering the eyes and uh... So I'm guessing how he was going was actually He was using his tongue to make the noises and I'm guessing he was from the air vibration and all that he was probably sensing where the ice was and he was kind of dodging around that and uh, okay he's going like this and here is something okay that happens that actually tips the scale towards these guys that's when Kikta realizes that <coughs> light is something that's only going to be advantageous to them. Like up until now, they decided not to use the light because they thought, oh, we'll be giving our, away our positions. But as far as I can remember, he's blind, isn't he? Or even if he's not blind, his, his eyesight is very like, you know, poor. So that's probably the reason why, you know, that like, you know, he, he wasn't able to realize that where he was, even when the, like, you know, Kikuta brought the little torch with him. And uh, as soon as Kikuta realized that light is actually advantageous for us in this situation, you know, we won't be giving away our location. He won't even be able to realize where we are because he cannot see properly. He did that. He, he, he did that. And obviously bringing light here makes it extremely advantageous for them because they can see properly, unlike Tony. So, you know, like Tony realized like something's going on, you know, he, you know obviously even if he's blind and probably cannot see, there's like a light source you realize that there's a light source you know there's a little bright little thing in front of your eyes and he realized that he's like oh this is a torch and he as soon as he realized he realized how like not in a troublesome situation he is he gets shot in his hand and he runs away <clears throat> okay so after that uh, they come out and they see that he has actually gone into the mountains <laughs> usam is crying because his leg has been shot it's like you guys like you know, come help me out and uh kick that's like all right you know tell the Ainu guy you go you know i'll i'll, I'll stay here I'll, I'll look at look after him and he goes on his way to hunt down tony and tony's running away and uh okay so ariko oh yeah that was his name not arisu ariko okay ariko um so here obviously usam is like you know like will he be fine you know he's only one person and uh kikta says ariko was part of the hakoda search party and he talks about the hakoda situation the lost march of mount hakoda i'm guessing this is based on true facts correct me if i'm wrong i think so i'm not quite sure uh, two years before the russo uh, Jap japanese war amori's fifth infantry regiment uh, was doing a march in the snow as a part of winter training. During this march, 19, uh, 1000, uh, sorry, 199 men lost their lives in what was one of the worst mountaineering accidents in history. Okay. 
So he's like, yeah, he, he's used to that. He, he like, you know, this is like, like his backyard, you know, this whole place, you know, if like, you know, if he's out on hunt, nobody can escape him. So now the only like, disadvantage in this situation was, uh, you know, like whenever like he was like, going on top of something that the noise that was happening, Tony was listening to it and Tony was quickly like, you know, running away. So after that, um, <clears throat> we see that uh, what he does is he starts shooting at Tony. I was like, what's he doing? Why is he shooting at him? And Tony also obviously hearing the sound, he starts like kind of shouting back at him. And uh, I'm pretty sure all the noises was the reason why the avalanche started. And as soon as the whole place was shaking, I'm like, oh boy, this is an avalanche. And as soon as he realized, Tony realized that this is what's happening, he's like, I lose. And there you go. Now, four days later, <clears throat> um, we see Usami and uh, Nikaido just chilling. And uh, Nikaido uh, is like, oh, where is, like, you know, Kikta? And he says he went to the mountain to search again. This part, I was a little bit confused. He says that it's been four days and Private Ariko isn't back. He's probably dead. I was like, wait a minute, what? what? He's not dead. Like, what, what, is, what are they saying? Makes sense why they, like, you know, like, came to that conclusion because Ariko and Kikta are playing their own game. Okay, so <laughs> I love how <laughs> Usami is like, oh, Surumi is going to come here and he's going to see that Ariko is dead. I injured my leg. You know, even I let the prisoner get away. He'll be extremely pissed and he'll abuse me. And yes, I'm so happy. <laughs> and he's just rolling around like a happy little kid, you know. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Now, after that, we see uh, what game they're playing, you know, like Ariko and uh, um, Kikta. Basically, obviously, Kikta has his own plan. He's like, all right, you know what? These two guys, you know, if if they get to know what we are doing, they'll probably they cannot be like, oh, we also helped or something like that. They're going to take part of our credit. No, like you know, like you know, me and Ariko would be the only ones who will give this tattoo to like you know, Lieutenant and Surumi, and he'll be very happy. You know, that's their game. It's not a like you know, they're, they're not obviously they're not betraying them or something. They're just like you know, they're just do, going to do it on their own and give it to Surumi. The end result will be the same, but they just want the like you know, like the what can I say, to be like the, what can I say, the, the shine, uh, what do you call that? Like they want to be the um, people who brought the stuff to Surumi and want to like, you know, put like a favorable impression on him. That's what he wants. And that's why they're doing this. And uh, here Ariko says something. When I checked the tattoos, I realized that they stopped at the body's medial line. Okay. Um, at the medial line. Uh, it was an instruction to strip off the skin like you would an animal. He realized that. We realized that way back in season one, you know, when uh, Sugimoto was like, oh, what the hell? Why is it? Why is the tattoo like this? So there you go. The way we get to, like, you know, see the tattoo, uh, uh, like, you know, see the map that's written, drawn on the tattoo format is if we actually cut open and, like, you know, completely, like, you know, just speed open them. Oh my God. And, uh, that's the only way it's going to become like a readable map. So other than that, it's kind of impossible. Obviously they have like a found a little, another different way to kind of counteract it. It's like, just sketch it, you know, obviously you can do that, you know, but it'll take a lot of like, you know, effort and time, but you can do it like that. You know, if you, if you properly study the tattoo and sketch it, yeah, it's possible. But you know, like obviously at that moment, uh, he said that this was like a situation like that. So I realized that I cannot take this body like, you know, with me because it's heavy. So I, I took it off. I took the hide off then and there. And you know, that's what I did. I brought the hide over here. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and they talk about the... Oh, he gives him the scarf bag, the thing that he wears. And... Uh, all right. After that, uh, like this is like, like this is the thing about Golden Kamui. It's crazy how like you know one character you see in one episode and the next episode he's just dead. 
like you know it's it's so like you know it's, it's so crazy and it's so like you know it it seems as if like you know like in this show like you know people die we we aren't even surprised we're like ah oh, like you know, anyone can die in the next episode that type of a whole situation and uh, yeah and obviously like you know they themselves also expected you know death to all of these characters all these characters that are here in this show you know like you know whichever character you take sugimoto shiraishi you know koito you know surumi everyone every one of them they know that ah tomorrow could be my last day you know, it's nothing nothing surprising i could die tomorrow you know and they know that and and it's like you know they're still like you know just just like joke around and everything and it's crazy how like you know we we realize that this show is serious business even with the weird sections of comedy that we have and them just goofing around just <laughs> doing weird things you know well, suddenly we realize oh this character he'll be dead now anytime and he's like you know he dies and there you go that's it it's over so yeah like you know who would have thought that suddenly tony would be introduced in this episode and he'll die in this episode only nobody realized that and that's what happened he he, he just he was shown here in this episode and was he's dead already so yep that's the crazy thing about this show and it's it's it's, it's unusually realistic you know like because that's what death is you know in reality you just die someday just like that you know like obviously this is like a situation where they're in danger so they're fighting with life and death every day all the time but just like this you know it's something like this you know people who are in situations like this where they're always fighting with life and death it's something like that you know you even if he, you you die tomorrow okay, it's it's just something you know you're dead and that's just it and that's why i'm saying this is in this way it's very realistic the whole depiction of death in this like you know in this show is is crazy like you know like in like in most animes i've seen like you know always whenever some character dies and everything you know not necessarily that that show like you know a show which shows death you know even if that character like you know that that show is like you know used to people characters dying in that anime you know whenever they show death you know there's like a like a certain impact or whatever you know like we are like you know that in that episode we see the back story you know like whenever that character dies this and that like you know when the, and we realize oh my god they're showing their back story and all that stuff you know they're doing something really cool really amazing you know like and then they suddenly die and in the end like you know there's like a there's like a huge thing that happens and you know that that episode like the whole highlight of the episode is that character has is like you know like was this was the last time we saw that character if, even if it's a bad character even if it's a good character I've seen this every anime does this this show however like i said it's like natural it's like normal oh today this guy died that's it nothing else from next episode we will be moving on to something else <laughs> here we saw tony dying did he get any flashback no no flashback you know nothing every character in this show nothing like that happens character just die and that's just it you know no flashback nothing you know like we don't even realize when someone will die that's a crazy thing and that's very unique i i love that about this show you know it's just like like in a, in a, in a very unusual way it's so realistic and uh, yeah like i said in the, from the next episode onwards like you know we'll just move on nothing else and uh, yeah obviously we don't want the main characters to die but you know like it wouldn't be like you know surprising if someone dies the next episode something like that and uh, and this is this also kind of scares me like i i, I feel like they, they might kill off sugimoto or something like i don't know <laughs> wouldn't surprise me at all if suddenly in one episode he dies like i'm like god damn like but i guess he kind of like you know like his, his whole thing is su immortal sugimoto so that kind of gives me a little bit of assurance like oh he probably won't die <laughs> and he all almost like you know died in like in a season uh two already like he already had that like you know that whole thing with death so he he surpassed that he went past that and he won against death so i feel like he's got immunity now or something he won't die <laughs> anyways um all right after this uh we get to see a little sugimoto and uh, ashripa that whole section a little cooking like you know like thing where there was like giving been given food we see like a like a tradition of this uh, the the ainu people over here <laughs> grandma <laughs> takes the uh the, what do you call it um the rice 
Use it and throws it. Okay. You know what? Like I said, even if this is a tradition, oh my god, like, nah. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's so much. What can I say? Like, uh, like imagine eating someone, someone threw out, out of it, their mouth. Oh my god, yeah. But thank god they just don't give it like that. They actually bake it. Like, it's, it's still like, you know, a, a lot better. You know, they, they take, I think that's what they did. Like, you know, they took it out of their mouth and they baked it, you know, kind of fried it and then gave it. Like, that's, that's, that's way more acceptable, I feel like, you know. Because if it was given in that way, like, you know, just took it out of the mouth and give it to him. Like, no, 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 that's impossible. <laughs> and I love how all of them start, I just love how Sugo just puts the whole thing in his mouth. Puts the thing in Shiraishi's mouth as well. They're probably drunk or something, you know, they're just... Shiraishi is just going to us, Granny, and she's he's like, oh, can I, can I get a, another one? Sugimoto comes in. Sugimoto's like, another one, Granny, and Granny's like, Pirika, Pirika. <laughs> and this part was so disgusting. Shiraishi's like, put them right in the mouth. Sugimoto comes in, and just throws. Oh my God, this part throws out the thing that was in his mouth. Tanigaki is like, what the hell is wrong with it? <laughs> oh, yo, this this show with some random like you know scenes that <laughs> they just make it so funny. I don't know why. It's so disgusting this scene, but it's so funny at the same time. Like what the? <laughs> All right. Um. Now here suddenly Koito asks uh um uh Skishima a question. What does Parchonak means. And uh, Sukushima says that, oh, it, it's actually like, you know, making fun of like a rich boy. Uh, it's what you say to make fun of a noble's son. Uh, in other words, a spoiled rich kid. And yeah, obviously, uh, Ogata's the one that told that. And he's like, where did you hear that? And Koito's fuming. He's like, yeah. So that's what you told me then, Ogata. And I remember that. So yeah, obviously that guy, um, the sniper guy, he's already has his vendetta against like you know Ogata. Obviously <laughs> Koito as well. Now he's fuming against him. So yeah, Ogata has so many enemies. Obviously, uh, uh, Sugimoto uh, is also extremely pissed off at Ogata. So like three to four characters are just completely pissed off and are almost. Like, you know, just, just has their, like, you know, like, guns ready for Ogata. Like, god damn. Imagine making that many enemies. <laughs> Alright, that's it. That was my reaction to this episode. Another great episode. And, uh, yeah. Uh, so, thanks for watching. This was my reaction to Golden Kamu Season 4, Episode Number uh, 3. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out and that's it so thank you for watching and uh, one thing uh, next week next week reaction uh, i'll it'll probably be, be delayed a little bit um because i won't be here i'll be going on a little vacation so next week's uh reaction for golden kamui might be delayed by a few days and uh, i might i'm not sure if i'll be able to like you know after coming back i'll be able to record it and upload it separately if i'm not able to i'll probably do two episodes in one day you know episode four when uh, not four sorry episode five when it'll come out i'll probably do episode four and five together or something like that we'll see but it's just wanted something that i wanted to let you guys know so thanks for watching yeah and i'll see you guys in the next episode until then goodbye and have a nice day